from swings over to damage as opposed to repair. You all with me? You got it? That's it. Now, you're going to hear other kinds of definitions, I'm sure, but that's what causes aging. What do telomeres do? Okay, remember, let's go back so you can see the telomere. The red thing. There it is, those red things. What do they do? Okay, number one, they're the time clocks. They tell you how long your cells can live. Number two, they stabilize your genome. And the other thing is, in that picture, you notice the blue parts of the chromosome are fairly long. The telomere doesn't just stabilize the genome close to it. It stabilizes that whole genome. It's like throwing a, you ever drive down the highway and the state's trying to build, uh, put some grass on there and they throw a big net over it to keep it from eroding? Well, that's exactly what the telomeres do. And there are a lot of biochemical reactions that are happening out there on that red tip that go all over the place. And they even affect things like the mitochondria, even though the mitochondria are nowhere near the telomeres. So the telomeres, and the more we find out, the more we see telomere, telomere, telomere. This is what's ruling. Telomeres rule, folks. I don't know what else to tell you. Now, they also, if they're long, confer longevity because there's a direct correlation with how long a cell can live if it doesn't get squashed or stepped on by a bus or a plane or you know, a piece of the radiation cloud from Japan that come over. Uh, we're talking about aging, okay? So th there's definitely c direct correlation between all those signs and symptoms of aging, those diseases, and telomere length, and you'll see that. And there's a definite correlation between longevity in human beings and telomere length. There are two immortal cell lines in the body. Who knows what they are? Show of hands, please. Come on, you guys. All right, all right. I'll, I'll let you. Stem cells, specifically embryonic stem cells, and as stem cells go down the pathway of becoming something other than a, a cell that can do anything, <laughs> when they decide, okay, I gotta be a heart cell or something like that, they lose their longevity. They lose their telomerase, the enzyme that lengthens, telomeres, and they become mortal. But you still have an immortal cell line in your body. Come on, there's only, what is it? Fibroblasts, Fibroblast, not, not quite, but good guess. Anybody else? Yeah, germ cells. That's why your kids are not born your age, okay? If I had a kid now, I wouldn't want them to be my age. The kid's going to come out, hopefully, with a normal complement of telomeres. Because if you believe in evolution, and I do, our germ cells come from the very first cell on the planet. Now, there's been some twists and turns between the single-celled organism and us, a nine billion trillion celled organism. But nonetheless, we come from that original cell, and the reason that cell line can be traced is because that's an immortal cell line. Telomerase keeps their telomeres long, the telomeres keep the cell immortal, it doesn't age. And that is why children are born young, by the way, in case you wondered. All right, telomerase, I've already mentioned this. This is an enzyme. It's in every cell of the body that has a nucleus, which is most cells of the body that mean anything, okay? And it is the longevity gene. If you turn on telomerase, you add length to your telomeres, you can stop the process or you can reverse the process, depending on how you turn it on and how much length you add back to those telomeres. I want to tell you something else. Uh, telomere length is an interesting thing because you, in a, an individual cell, you have uh, 46 chromosomes, and each of them have two ends. So you have... 92 telomeres. All it takes is one short telomere in that 96 to throw that cell into either crisis or senescence, and I'll explain what those things are. One short telomere is all it takes out of all those, okay? Now, telomerase is the longevity gene, okay? Once again, those red areas at the end of the chromosome, when you are conceived, and mommy and daddy get together, hopefully in an act of love, and a single-celled, almost an organism, is formed. I think it's called a zygote. I'm not sure, is that right? Zygote. Okay. As opposed to zygote, which is the thing with the horns and Billy. Uh, uh, zygote. What an awful, you, you started life as a zygote. <laughs> Sorry, so did I. A zygote is, half mommy, half daddy, hopefully the good half of both, and it divides and divides and divides and divides and divides and becomes you. You become a newborn. In the process, 
When you are a zygote, you have 15,000 base pairs, 15,000 little connections, 15,000 bits of telomere. By the time you're born, you've chewed up 5,000 of them already. Cellular division. Remember, when you divide cells, the consequence is telomere loss. So you're born with 10,000 telomeres. And your cells die at 5,000 telomeres. So we're all living on that last 5,000. <laughs> or at least that middle 5,000, I should say. So, you are dying from the moment you're conceived. Not the moment you're born, the moment you're conceived. Did you, you know that? You're shaking your head like you knew that, right? Yeah. Uh, that's the point. There's not a lot of these things to burn through. So I'm hoping that you're getting the impression that this is precious stuff and you want to take care of it. Telomerase, there it is. It's a graphic representation, the green glove that comes along and adds length to the telomere. Okay. Aging. There are three big forces you need to control to go back to that aging process and slow it down. Inflammation, inadequate or improper methylation, and glycation. Now, inflammation, and I have the, uh, the things that you should most commonly do, or people will most commonly do, diet supplements, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And we're gonna talk about all that, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that, because you're gonna get into that with me in a few minutes. Now, there's a very controversial statement down there. I said, the most important thing you can do to address all these things is change your diet, which to me means eat organic. I, I'm not gonna tell you what to eat, okay? I mean, if you ask me, I'll tell you what I eat, but I, I'm not gonna tell you what to eat. People eat what they eat for various and sundry reasons. You people are very educated and you have a phenomenal teacher in David to tell you what to eat, okay? So I'm gonna give you that one, folks, all right? However, and this, this audience is special, so I have to tell people two things. Number one, eat organic, and number two, get rid of refined sugars, okay? Now, most of you have already done a lot of that. The easiest thing to do, because you gotta remember, a doctor has to take care of all kinds of people, and I can't just let everybody die because they don't wanna do everything I tell them. The easiest thing to do is to take supplements. And from my experience with nutraceutical supplements, you can cure diseases with them, you can improve the health of sick people, sometimes cure them, and you can certainly make healthy people even healthier, especially if their diet has holes in it. And guess what? Every diet's got some holes. Inflammation, let's talk about that. Now, I know that you heard uh, some about inflammation from Dr. Oxner when he showed you some bacteria being chased down by white blood cells, okay? Inflammation is not a bad thing when it's directed and when it's circumscribed and it's against an enemy, like a bacterial infection. The kind of inflammation that happens in the body that causes disease is global, non-directed, non-targeted, and throughout the whole body. The target is you. So if you eat bad food and you get an inflammatory response to it, the target is you. If you don't have enough omega-3, and I'll call it fish oil, because all the studies have been done with fish oil, omega-3, EPA, DHA, the target is you, okay? You don't sleep, the target is you, all right? Non-directed, global, ongoing inflammation. But we do need some of it. How do you measure it? Cholesterol, lousy test. Look for your HDL cholesterol, blood sugar, insulin levels. You all know that high. High blood sugar, high insulin are inflammatory. Homocysteine is basically a B vitamin uh, dependent thing. C-reactive protein, again, these are all things your, your doctors can do for you. And then autoimmune antibodies if you have autoimmune disease. Fish oil levels, nobody measures fish oil levels. because So for those of you, especially you vegans, you want to check your omega-3 levels. I'm a big checker, okay? I eat a lot of fish oil, but I still check my levels. Here's an easy way to do it. Telomere length. In the Q&A session, we'll cover this. Somebody asked that question because I don't encourage most people to get telomere length testing. It's not a good test yet. It will be soon, all right? That's a methyl group. Methylation. Methylation is important because it's an off-on switch to your DNA and it, inter it interfaces with this thing called epigenetics. So what is epigenetics? Okay, the big picture there, the one with the ladder, that's the library. That's your genes. That's your blueprints. That's what you use to make things. The epigenetics functionally now, this is just a functional definition, is the books that get read. And this is why when we did the Human Genome Project, we found that only 20% of what happens to us as people is genetically predetermined. 80% is us. 80% is our interface with our environment, our sleep, our eating, our exercise, our supplementation, our meditation and stress relief. That's 
what determines 80% of what happens to us, and the interface is our epigenetics, okay? Now, how do you alter your epigenetics? The primary way is to make sure you get all your B vitamins, B6, B12, and folate, and make sure that you eat healthy. If you need supplementation, buy a good one. Buy a good one with lots of B vitamins. That's what you do for methylation, and that pretty much solves the problem. Methyl donors, people ask me about, I don't think they're necessary unless you have a real problem and can't get your vitamin levels up otherwise. Methylation is not usually a problem of supply, it's usually a problem of the factories that take those methyl groups and put them on DNA. Two most important methylating foods that we know about so far, onions and garlic. Onions and garlic. Okay, test for methylation, you're better off eating healthy than testing for. Okay, uh, there's some cancer tests coming out, and uh, I'm, I'm going to gloss over that for the moment because they're not even available, but you'll hear more about methylation. Glycation adds sugar. I show you this picture to remind people that when you pour sugar on the ground and it dries up and you step in it, it sticks. That's essentially what happens in your cells when you have too much sugar. Okay? This is non-enzymatic. Just having the sugar hanging around will glom onto proteins and genetic material and epigenetic material. So managing those big three is important. The big three, okay, inflammation, methylation, glycation, have detrimental effects on your genetic DNA, that was the purple stuff, 